Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and I want to show you uh, basically how a typical gas water heater works and what the different components of it are. Um, to begin with, I'm going to start at the top, kind of work my way down. So uh, what you have at the very top here is you would typically, this one isn't a, uh, a ventless water heater, so this one would have a chimney coming out the top in the center here. Uh, then you've got your cold side here, so this is the cold water coming into the water heater, and this is the hot side going out. Uh, typically, you can see here, typically it'll be labeled on the housing of the, of the water heater itself, so here you see hot. Uh, I don't see anything labeled for the cold, but at least you know one, one and the other. And on the back side here is the anode rod. Okay, so uh, it could be anywhere in here, but it's, it sometimes is labeled, but it's, it should be in the top. Okay, so then the, uh, the next item we have is, uh, as I'm working down, is we've got this uh, pressure relief valve. So if something malfunctions and the water gets too hot inside the heater and it builds up too much pressure, this valve here is designed to, to release and let off some of that pressure and steam and water. Uh, now typically what it should have is actually a uh, iron or sometimes I've seen it in plastic rod that comes down the side of the water heater so that if hot water or steam or anything shoots out of there it isn't scalding somebody standing close by so it's directing it down towards the floor and preferably to a drain. Okay so we've got that point that part there then directly down here on this one below it is the actual drain so uh, they recommend draining your some water out of your water heater uh, you know every year or twice twice a year sort of thing so this would be a drain on on the bottom that you can open up let some water out or if maybe you had to do some maintenance or whatever sometimes you got to let some water out to do that to, to release some pressure uh, with this pressure relief as well they recommend that uh, they actually recommend I believe it's every month or something you're supposed to flip this just give it a quick flip and uh, make sure it's functioning properly uh, I don't know hardly anybody that does that but that's what they recommend okay so as we work our way around down here I, I'm going to uh, just move to the other side now again I as I said at the beginning of the video this is a gas water heater okay so uh, you're gonna have a gas some sort of gas valve on it this is where you know your control is for the temperature well this is the temperature this is the pilot control uh, on this one this is where the gas line would be entering um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to reposition the heater at a little better height for the camera and uh, we'll go through the, the, the bottom side of this water heater and show you what everything is and how it works. Okay, so we've just brought the water heater up to a, a better level here to work on it or to display it. Uh, so we already talked about the gas module, which is right here. So you should find a panel somewhere quite close to it with a little uh, cover that comes off and then typically there'll be another some type of a door or sliding cover in there that you can uh, open up to access the burner and the thermocoupler and everything else. So once we get looking down in here what you're going to see is right back here you're going to see the uh, burner itself that's this item right here okay so that uh, once the gas or once the uh, sensor says that uh, there is enough gas and it's burning properly that it calls for heat on the water this this ignites the or the burner ignites sorry this right here this line right here is the actual pilot line okay so once you've lit the pu the water heater this pilot will always be burning on this type of water heater it's always going to be burning right beside it or right between these two right back in here is uh, that's the thermocoupler so basically what that is is just a sensor that uh, tells the regulator the gas regulator that there is a pilot light burning and that it's okay to allow more gas in there to light the main burner which uh, it's kind of hard for me to get in there but this far to the left side here there's a heavier line and it actually that's where the gas goes in and gets to the burner you can see it running underneath the burner there and it then it, once the thermocoupler says it's all right to ignite uh, gas is released into that bigger line which then ignites the burner and that's what heats your water 
Okay, so that's the basic, uh, basic premise on how it works as far as the gas side of it. You can see here as we rotate up under this dome, so the burner heats this area underneath and this dome and then the gases or the uh, exhaust goes up through that center pipe and that's what comes up through the top in the middle and into the chimney. Okay, so, so uh, I've, I've talked about this basic, these components here. And now some of these parts, it doesn't really, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to picture what, they're, what really happens inside the tank. And we've kind of uh, done a bit of a cutaway on this tank so that we can explain that to you. So this is the inside of your typical water heater tank. Now the gross grungy crud that you see in here right now is actually pretty typical. It's a little uh, over the top on this one because this heater has been sitting empty for about six or seven months. So some of the real excess rust and gr grime in that I think is more to do with the fact that there's been air exposed to the inside of this tank for a few months and the tank was wet and yada yada yada. Okay, so it looks a little, little worse than it typically should in a normal water heater, but uh, this is, is uh, you know, I shouldn't say that there isn't going to be some grunge in there if you, if you were to actually open up your own. Okay, so let's look at some of the bits and pieces in here. Um, I guess we'll start at the top. Now I've turned this around so it's opposite of what you watched me show the first time. Right up here is the cold water inlet, okay? And it comes in to this white plastic thing that you see right here, which is called the dip tube. Now these dip tubes, what they do is they force that cold water all the way down here to the bottom of your water heater, okay? So we're, we're near the bottom here. And the reason it wants to do that is so that it's forcing only hot water, like this is mixing now down here, the cold water with the hot. Now the hot water is forced to the top and it goes up through this hole right here, which is where the, the, cold, the hot line comes out of the top of the tank. If in a typical water heater, sometimes people will say, oh, my water heater's going. I had a shower today and within two minutes it was already not giving me hot water anymore. Uh, you know, that, that actually isn't always true. It, it isn't always that your water heater's going. A lot of times the culprit is this dip tube. Because as you can see in the water heater, see this? This is an old dip tube here. See these little pieces down here in the bottom? These are also pieces of old dip tubes. You can see how chewed up and uh, brittle and uh, in bad shape they are. What happens is over time this plastic degrades and it either falls off or it starts uh, kind of disintegrating. And so what happens is you might end up with your dip tube only being this long. So your cold water comes in and right away it can mix in the top end of the tank which cools off your water immediately that's going out to your shower or your tub or whatever. So a lot of times all you need to do is have this dip tube replaced or replace it yourself. And uh, we will have a video posted as well showing you how to do that. Okay, so this tube here typically for an average water heater might cost you 20 bucks. And quite honestly most people with a little bit of knowledge can change that tube on their own. Okay, as opposed to five or six hundred dollars for a new water heater plus the service charge and everything to come out and change it. Okay, so that's the dip tube. It's a, it's a very vital part of your water heater working correctly. Um, this ugly looking thing that you have right here, that's what's left of the anode rod. A typical anode rod is gonna look like this. So it's a solid piece of, uh, well not solid, but it's a big rod of aluminum or magnesium or even a mix of it that's supposed to be in your rod, or sorry, supposed to be in your water heater. And what it does is it's supposed to attract any uh, minerals and that sort of thing so that they eat this rod instead of eating out your tank. Okay, so you can see in this tank, this rod here is absolutely doing nothing. It's done its job, but it should have probably been replaced six months ago by the look of it. Okay, so it totally gets eaten up. Here's a piece of either that rod or an older one down here in the bottom, just leaning in the tank. 
And, and like I said, this is pretty typical. This is the kind of thing you would find probably in your own tank if it's a few years old. This tank here is probably, uh, oh, it's probably been going for 40 plus years, maybe even 50 years. So, I mean, uh, this tank's definitely had its time. Okay, so, uh, so we talked about the dip tube, the anode rod. Uh, there wasn't too much to talk about on the hot water outlet, which is in the top. Um, now, I'm just trying to get orientated. I'm gonna switch to the other side again. If you look past the dip tube, right up here, can you see in there? See the end of my, so right here, this kind of rod thing that's sticking out right there. That is that uh, pressure release valve. Okay, so that little rod is what, uh, basically it's sort of like a temperature sensor. And when it gets too hot, it actually trips that valve to let off some pressure. So that's what that is up there. Okay, and then as we come down and over to uh, right down here, this piece here is kind of, you can see a hole right here. Okay, so that is actually the drain. So that's the port going through the side of the tank. Uh, to that drain that I showed you on the outside. And you can see this one's, you know, a third full of sediment and crud. That's why it's important to drain wa some water from your tank every year, just to drain out some of that sludge from the bottom. And that sludge is just typically the minerals and things left over in your water after it's been heated and heated. Now over here, behind this piece of dip tube, is, uh, this is the uh, temperature sensor on the end of the, uh, the gas control valve. So as your water cools down and, and needs to activate the, the burner, it, uh, this is what senses it and tells the burner to turn on. So it makes sense that it's near the bottom of your tank where your cold water is supposed to come in and, and uh, then it calls for heat and heats your water up. This pipe in the middle, that's the flue for the uh, gases leaving the, the gas burner down below and up into the chimney. Okay, and as we kind of work our way out, um, you can see here, if I just turn this a little bit more carefully, you can see here's our inner lining. This is the actual tank here. Then you're gonna have some type of insulation and then the outer shell that's just decoration to uh, you know, make it look pretty. Uh, it was a bit of a process to cut through all of that. As you can see, it's pretty sharp and uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own heater for any reason, but uh, we did this just so we give you an idea what what you should, you know, kind of how all this stuff ties together and how it works. Um, now, uh, electric heater has some definitely some similar components, but uh, not all the same. Okay, so so that's how our gas heater works. Um, all this crap in the bottom, that's you know, it kind of looks like sand, really, is what it looks like. But uh, that's just all the stuff that settled out over your water uh, over time. And uh, in this area, we have actually really good water. So it's not that we're using well water or anything like that. That's, this is uh, actually very typical. Um, so uh, I think that this is the best, was the best way to kind of give you some insight to the, the internal workings of your water heater. And uh, maybe open your eyes a little bit to what's going on in there and why it's important to maintain it as best you can. And quite honestly, this is my own water heater out of my own house. And I know all these things to maintain. And uh, you know, I'm usually pretty vigilant about changing the anode rod and knowing when to change the dip tube. Uh, maybe not so vigilant about draining it as often as it should be or working the pressure relief valve. But uh, so even, even the fact that I have the knowledge of what needs to be done, you can see what your tank can look like on the inside. So just imagine somebody who's never done any maintenance on their tank and it's maybe as old as this or even half as old. Okay, so uh, hopefully this doesn't gross you out. Like I said, some of, this, some of this stuff you see here is only because it has been empty for a while and you know the top wasn't plugged off so air has been able to get in there. But uh, some of these blisters like you're seeing here you know, you can't really see it. I don't know if you can tell right here. There's kind of some blistering on here, some rust. That's, that's what's in your tank. That's, that, I mean, it's, it usually doesn't uh, eat as quickly at this as it will the outside shell, but uh, eventually if you get a leak 
and it's not coming from one of the valves or something on the outside, it's because you've got a pinhole in the, in the tank structure itself and it's, it's uh, worked its way to, to being a leak and at that point there's no going back. You're, you're at the point of replacing your heater at that point. So, so if you can keep some of your maintenance up, you can keep these babies going for a long time. Uh, I find these older units probably, you know, like most things these days, ran a lot longer than some of our newer ones maybe, but uh, uh, like I said, if you can keep your maintenance up, it's just gonna extend the life of your heater. And knowing about this dip tube, don't let a plumber talk you into a new water heater when maybe all you need is a $20 dip tube. Even if you've gotta pay them to change it, it's still way cheaper than a water heater. You know, we might as well say a thousand bucks or in that range compared to maybe a hundred dollars for them to come out and change that. So, okay, so uh, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Uh, you can uh, look at some of our other, we've actually got quite a few uh, videos on the water heater aspect. So, uh, uh, you know, we deal with most of these items that we already talked about in this one specifically on other videos showing you how to replace it or maintain it. So. Check them out, see what you think. Uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, I uh, appreciate you to click the thumbs up button uh, somewhere down here. And uh, also uh, clip, click the subscribe button so you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And there uh, you'll get you know, full access to every video we have up and going. And uh, believe me, that'll take you some time to go through them all if you want to. And uh, I would encourage you to. Um, also, you can check out our uh, website at www.houseimprovements.com and there you can find the uh, forum page and other articles. Uh, the forum's really popular, so if you have any questions about water heater or uh, any other topic to do with a DIY project you maybe got going on, just post it up there and I'll be sure to get back to you. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.